On behalf of Namita Gokhale, William Dalrymple, and all my colleagues at Team Work Arts, welcome back to a new season of JLF's Brave New World, beamed for the first time since the lockdown, straight from Digi Palace in Jaipur, from where the festival originated 13 years ago. We'd like to thank the Digi family for their continued support of the festival. I can tell you just how delighted we are today to be able to broadcast directly from Jaipur. Our magazine partner for the series is The Week, journalism with a human touch. And in case any of you missed our earlier session today, Raya, Krishna Deva Raya, Vijay Nagara, Shrinivas Reddy in conversation with Manu S. Pillay, you can catch this on YouTube or our Facebook platform. Our second session today to commemorate Indian Navy Day 2020 is Operation X, the war that changed the Indian subcontinent. Sandeep Unnithan and Commodore A.W. Chaudhary from Bangladesh in conversation with Commodore Shrikant Kesnoor from the Indian Navy with opening remarks by Vikram Dorai Swami, the High Commissioner of India to Bangladesh. Commemorating the anniversary of the 1971 war between East and West Pakistan, Operation X written by Captain M.N.R. Samant, who unfortunately has passed over, and Sandeep Unnithan is the untold story behind one of the world's largest covert naval wars. Naval Commando Operation X was the directorate of the Naval Intelligence's code for a series of complicated guerrilla operations directed against the maritime jugular of the Pakistan army in erstwhile East Pakistan. These innovative sabotage missions executed with specially trained East Bengali college students were part of India's assistance to the Mukti Bahini guerrillas in the months preceding the 1971 Indo-Pakistan war. NCO X used the largest number of maritime saboteurs in the history of modern naval welfare, warfare to achieve its objectives. Author Sandeep Unnithan, executive editor of India Today, has also written the book Black Tornado. Commodore Abdul Wahid Chaudhary of the Bangladeshi Navy was the chief of Operation Jackpot, one of the three operations undertaken by the Bengal Mukti Bahini, along with the Indian government. In a conversation with naval historian Commodore Shrikant Kesnoor, they discuss the inner world of this conflict and its many intricacies. Sandeep Unnithan is executive editor with India Today magazine, which he writes on national security issues. He has authored Black Tornado, the sieges of Mumbai 2611, and about the military aspect of the November 26th, 2008 attacks. The book was adapted as the web series State of Siege. His second book, Operation X, co-authored with Captain M.N.R. Samant, released in August 2019, describes a covert naval war in the run-up to the 1971 liberation of Bangladesh. Commodore A.W. Chaudhary is a senior naval officer of the Bangladesh Navy who retired in January 1997. He's a qualified submariner and a long gunnery specialist. He led Operation Jackpot at Chittagong Port and cut the lifeline of Pakistani forces by sinking ships in the Karnapuli River. Commodore Chaudhary is widely known as a pioneer war hero of Bangladesh and for being the first to lead his team from France and join the war from abroad. Commodore Shrikant Kesnoor, an alumni of the National Defense Academy, is a serving naval officer with more than 34 years. He has commanded two frontline warships, served as faculty in prestigious military institutions, and done a diplomatic tenure in East Africa. Deeply interested in naval and maritime history, he has been chief editor, lead writer of nine books and several monographs journals produced by the Indian Navy. Please do remember to ask questions and comment by typing it into the comment section below. And we will ask these of our speakers today. Uh, in case any of you drop off due to bandwidth issues, you can find us on our Facebook and YouTube channels. Ladies and gentlemen, on the occasion of the Indian Navy Day 2020, we're honored to have with us His Excellency Vikram Dorai Swami, High Commissioner of India to Bangladesh. Vikram Dorai Swami became ambassador of India to Uzbekistan in October 2014, before being assigned as India's ambassador to the Republic of Korea in April 2015. Thereafter, serving as head of division for Bangladesh and Myanmar, 
And in April 2019, he was tasked with setting up new division, new division at the Ministry of External Affairs on the Indo-Pacific region. He is currently the High Commissioner of India to Bangladesh. High Commissioner, we're absolutely delighted to have you on this very special occasion to say a few words to all our people listening in. Over to you. Thank you very much, Sanjoy. And it's a great pleasure to be at the JLF this year virtually. Um, I have in the past had the great good fortune to come as a visitor to the JLF. And I'm delighted to see that pandemic or, or no pandemic, the JLF continues with the same pioneering spirit of bringing ideas to, to the world of readers and to the world of people interested in new and interesting uh, avenues of discussion. So thank you for doing this and thank you particularly for giving us an opportunity to bring to front and center uh, something that ought to be of great interest to every historian, every person interested in strategy and hist strategic history, every naval officer and everybody in our subcontinent. Why I say this is because the 3rd and 4th of December are red letter days in the history of the subcontinent. The transformation of what had become um, a steady uh, series of guerrilla, of guerrilla conflicts into full, full on, full fledged battle, uh, the battle that led to the liberation of Bangladesh, is a central marker in the history of the South Asian region. And so the foundation of Bangladesh, the liberation of Bangladesh, is a very important fact in the way we look at our region and in the way we uh, remember our history. So that, of course, is most fitting that we do this on the day that the conflict started, on a day that is also Indian Navy, uh, Indian Navy Day, and that we start this conversation with a conversation about um, a history that is only now being told, thanks to the excellent work by Sandeep Punithan in his wonderful book, Operation X, which I urge those who have not read it to go out there and buy it, because it is a cracker of a read, uh, to Captain Samant, who is unfortunately no longer with us, uh, and of course, to the brave heroes of the Bangladesh Navy, none more so than Commodore Chaudhary, who's with us today. It's a great honor to see him here, and other Mukti Jodhas who, in the exact meaning of that word, were warriors for freedom, warriors for liberation. Um, I think, therefore, the significance of the day is obviously well made, and you've made that point. A second thing that is important to remember is that history doesn't pass itself on. History must be written, recorded, and continued by people who are interested in understanding what happened in the past. That is relevant because the history of, uh, of Bangladesh, the history of the liberation of Bangladesh, is central to where Bangladesh and India, and indeed our region, go from here. The kind of Bangladesh that we see, the kind of Bangladesh that the Bangladeshi people want to see, and the kind of region that we want to have, all take their origin from 1971. So 1971, like 1947, is a central landmark in the history of the region. And your conversation today at the JLF with this distinguished panel is critical to understanding and passing on knowledge of what 71 is and why it should be important to all of us. The third point I wanted to make is the value that we get from um, recalling the history of um, men and women who contributed to the liberation of uh, Bangladesh because it is so much a people's story in Bangladesh. We tend often in India to look at it as an India-Pakistan conflict which it was, of course, but from December 1971. It was not from March 1971 and onwards when the people of uh, then East Pakistan, the Bangladeshi people, had stood up for their rights, for what was, in, in essence, their, their just demand for a fair share of political power and an economic power in what was their own country. The denial of these rights and the mass oppression uh, unleashed upon them, which quite frankly, in any other time, in any other age, would have been called genocide, uh, is the start po starting point of this history. So yeah. understanding that and taking that forward, rec recognizing that this is a people's struggle of the Bangladeshi people to begin with, is critical in 
getting this picture correct. We in India sometimes need to recall that because uh, obviously from our perspective, it's easy to see it as an India-Pakistan conflict because it has been an enduring part of our uh, troubled history with Pakistan since 1947 that there have been all these conflicts. But 1971 should and must be remembered primarily as a conflict o about Bangladesh. In other words, a conflict that was led, sustained and fought first and foremost by the Bangladeshi people. So, you know, the success of that war needs to be remembered as a people's struggle in which we as India were honored to be able to have a role in, 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 in bringing that conflict to an early, early and successful conclusion. My last point, and something that, uh, that I would um, encourage others who may be so interested, there are literally hundreds of these stories out there, stories of, uh, of sailors, airmen, soldiers, uh, journalists, um, uh, civilian uh, agitators, people who got out there, put their lives on the line because it was pretty easy between March 1971 and December 1971 to get shot for your pains. People who s believed in, in what Bengali culture and a, and a composite Bengali culture was all about, those people's stories are still out there to be told. It's 50 years since that, since that uh, deeply bloody conflict took place. It's not a moment too soon. So to those who may be interested, Sandeep offers a very good role model for how this can be done, but we can't expect Sandeep to write every story that there is, a, that there is out there. It is important for us to be able to go out there, meet the Commodore Chaudhrys of Bangladesh, meet others who have contributed so much to such an important moment in our history. So to that, I, I, I urge your audience, members of, members of the public who are interested in history in, in our region, to get out there, find the stories, bring these things out. Because without that, there is no tomorrow that cannot be built on, a, on, on the past that we created together in 1971. So thank you for having me on, Sanjoy. Thank you to, uh, to your panelists, to Sandeep, uh, to Shri, uh, Commodore Srikant Keshnur. Uh, great to know that there is a naval historian out there writing all these stories. And of course, most of all, to uh, Commodore Chaudhary. It's a, it's a great honor to see you here. And I look forward to being able to interact over the year ahead as we celebrate 50 years of liberation in Bangladesh. And for us um, to be able to be part of those celebrations will always be an honor. Thank you all and have a great evening of discussions. Thank you, High Commissioner. Thank you for joining us and placing uh, today in perspective absolutely 59, 50 years uh, since the, the battle, the liberation of Bangladesh. And we're delighted that you were able to join us today. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Operation X, the war that changed the Indian, sub Indian subcontinent. Sandeep Unithan and Commodore A.W. Chaudhary in conversation with Commodore Srikant Kesnur. Commodore Kesnur, over to you. Thanks. Thanks, Sanjay. Thank you very much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's wonderful being with all of you today. And on behalf of my co-panelists, I'd like to thank JLF Brave New World for giving us this opportunity. It's a landmark date, as has been pointed out, at the start of commemoration of 50 years of the 71 war. Uh, also, the Navy Day, we couldn't have asked for a better date, a better time, and a more opportune moment than to discuss uh, one of the most seminal books of the war, and that is Operation X by Sandeep Unnithan. And uh, I'm delighted to be conversing with him and Commodore Chowdhury about the book. So let me dig into it straight away since the introductions have been made. Uh, let me come to Sandeep. Uh, Sandeep, you, you are a journalist. You are an author, so you look at things through a very contemporary lens, but you're also a history student uh, and you are a Navy kid. So I'd like to, you to put on all those hats together and tell our listeners why, how, first, how this book happened and also along with that, why this book is important. In a sense, what is the event that you're talking about? What is it that you have recorded which has not hitherto been known to people and why, therefore, uh, it is important for people to, to be reading about the book. Uh, Sandeep, over to you. Thank you, Commodore Kesnur, uh, and thank you uh, to the organizers of the 
Jaipur Literature Festival and the Brave New World. Thank you, Sanjay Roy, and uh, uh, High Commissioner Dorai Swami, uh, and my good friend Komrod Chaudhary. I'm good, uh, so happy to see you here again uh, this evening, uh, Komrod Chaudhary. It's so good to see you. Um, uh, Srikant, uh, your question on uh, the, how the book happened, firstly, very quickly, it was a phone call. It just began over a phone call a few years back. A friend of mine in the Navy uh, called me and asked me, do you want to meet Captain Samanth? Because he has a book to write. And uh, that was it. That triggered uh, of the, the, the book quest. And there I was with him, um, meeting uh, Captain Samanth and Commander Vijay Kapil. Now, I already knew about this operation in a way because almost 25 years back, there was a very, very seminal book called War in the Indian Ocean, written by Vice Admiral Mihir Roy. I read that book. I was a trainee. Uh, uh, you know, I'd just begun my career in journalism then. And what struck me was that the first time that this had been written of, of in India, this unique naval guerrilla operation that Admiral Roy described in very great detail, but he never mentioned the whole story for obvious reasons. I mean, it was a covert war and he wanted to keep the secret. So uh, that book was always in my mind. And I said that, you know, here is a story that needs to be explored, taken further. You know, we, we need to go and speak with all these uh, great heroes like Komrod Chaudhary who've been mentioned in that. And that opportunity actually presented itself a few years back when I finally met Captain Samant who wanted to tell his story. And, uh, you know, Operation X is actually, it's a very unique story because it's about a naval guerrilla war of the kind that we haven't seen since the Second World War. Now, in the Second World War, you've seen the Italian Navy use guerrilla warfare. Uh, there have been cases of the Viet Cong in the Vietnamese War using guerrilla warfare. Uh, but those were primarily combatants. Here you have, for the first time, uh, college students and, uh, you know, literally uh, young men from the colleges and schools in Bangladesh, they were professionals who had fled this genocide uh, uh, that uh, began, the Pakistan army, uh, you know, triggered off in March of 1971. And they had fled into India. And you had the Indian government uh, recognizing this Bangladeshi government in exile and training the brave men and women who had come there. And this was part of that operation, this larger uh, assistance to the Bangladesh uh, government in exile you know, training the Mukti Bahini, as they were called. The naval commando uh, units, as uh, they were called, finally, they uh, ended up training something like 400 naval commandos in a special camp in West Bengal. Um, and you won't believe this, it was the battlefield of Plassey, the actual battlefield where Robert Clive defeated Siraj Dola. And that was the ground that was chosen to train them, not for any historical reason, but because it was a sugarcane uh, plantation that was available. And you had this very incredible uh, uh, happenstance of uh, Komrod Chaudhary leading this group of uh, Bangladeshi submariners, Bengali submariners from a Pakistani submarine from uh, France. And he, you know, comes all the way back to India. And it's so it's a meeting of minds and causes and, uh, and it all manifests in this training camp in West Bengal that's set up in the run up to the war. And the Indian Navy, which is the small, the smallest of the three services, comes up with this completely radical plan to train these college students, a few ex-servicemen who've quit the Pakistani Navy, and they are shaped into this very unique guerrilla outfit that is trained to attack warships and merchant ships, which are the lifelines of uh, Bangladesh, uh, then East Pakistan. And this campaign began somewhere in August and you had, uh, you know, batches of uh, train commandos being launched in from West Bengal and Tripura and Meghalaya into uh, East Pakistan to carry out these subortia missions at very great personal risk to themselves. And, you know, uh, men like Komrod Chaudhary who led one of the largest naval subortia attacks possibly in maritime history, that one single attack on the night of August 15th where he's uh, led almost 80 commandos to attack those merchant ships that were lined Sandeep, up. Sandeep, I'm going to be asking him about that. So Yes. So it, it's it's actually a very, uh, you know, it, this is the kind of book that was waiting to be written. Unfortunately, it was never written for various reasons that it was a covert operation. And, uh, you know, it was never spoken of very overtly all, all of these years. And it was 
all thanks to captain samant my co-author in fact who decided that you know this was the time for you know it's almost been 50 years after the war and this was his chance to yeah, you know give it back to uh, society in a, in a sense the greatest gift that he gave all of us i believe today is the gift of knowledge the gift of knowing about this very unique operation this that virtually laid the foundation of, of the bangladesh navy so that's what in a in a nutshell uh, that's what operation x is all about thanks lovely uh, thanks that's that's a wonderful intro and and for our uh, i think viewers this is the book as um, uh, high commissioner uh, vikram toreswamy uh, described it it's cracker of a book it's unputdownable and and it's not fiction it's real history it's been written at a very rapid pace and as sandeep describes it it's a meeting of many people and ideas and causes and one of those foremost people in that uh, is commodore chaudhry uh, commodore chaudhry sir i'm going to come to you now your life is is a very dazzling bio data and lots of that has been mentioned a lot more remains to be said now uh, your escape from from france that itself is like a fantastic uh, movie that can be made from toulon you went to sweden from uh, and there you came to barcelona you went to madrid you escaped from there that's a brilliant story wonderfully described but i'm not going to ask you about that Uh, uh that i think readers should read it for for the trading description i'm going to come to your training camp first it begins uh, at the yamuna river then you come to palashi as sandeep has described and sandeep's book begins with a with a prologue of the 1757 uh, war so you start training there i want to ask you sir what was the sort of uh, chemistry what was the dynamics when the mangro aid met the indian trainers uh, did you have any sense or idea of the scale and the magnitude of the operation you are going to undertake chaudhry sir please 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 bolo thank you commodore sir it's a great day and i'm extremely happy meeting all of you i feel very proud and honored especially his excellency high commissioner who inspired me to be present here and of course the little sandy saab is one of my weakness that i love him the way he has focused me he has brought me today to the world in fact he came with a very short notice to dhaka he met my son also but he stayed at just few hours what a brilliant brain he has he remembered everything i don't know whether he was carrying any other gadgets to tape down but it was wonderful the way he brought up the operation x it is now going all over the world and for which i am in front of you and met you sir well the beginning although the time factor putting all of us in nutshell the beginning of my defection and finishing with the operation is too big believe me you are watching me virtually if you would have seen my body language and the tone and the wordings i to i you would have been hypnotized it is something unique i never thought of that day will come an operation jackpot of this nature will be led by me and this operation jackpot is the biggest single biggest operation in the whole world till today nobody sandeep sahab has mentioned about the second world war but those were 
combatant type but this one was absolutely a change of life you carry not the dummy mind you carry the live mind of 5 kg weight on top of your dummy and swimming across for the target i remember when i was in the halfway through in the konnufuli river one of the most serious river in bangladesh connected with the bay of bengal heavy tide and current under at times six and above so we had to swim and swim from the other side of the naval jetty to this side and hit 11 ships whatever may be the type of ship whether the navy naval gunboats or any kind of merchant ship the whole idea was to block the pakistanis lifeline bringing the logistic support from pakistan indians were really brilliant they have almost with the war they closed down the air route the only route was open for pakistan was the ocean route the river route the bay of bengal and the indian ocean via colombo to reach chittagong and khulna now starting from france we na i never thought that there will be a chance to defect and join the liberation war this was the man behind and today also in honor of bongo bundu and it is his year bongo bundu's borsho the centenary of bongo bundu and that leader has inspired me he was the great leader in our liberation in our independence in our freedom he was fighting for this particular liberation war for a long time not in one day he began long long ago he was watching the behavior of the pakistanis how they were doing with us they have done so much of injustices they have done so much of atrocities and the killing it was unbearable and then he came up with the 7th march speech from tolon these few background pictures and the bongo bundu's speech was keeping me in waiting when the declaration is coming when the 25th march the crackdown started the pakistani from this dhaka where i am they just ran over the innocent civilians and killed indiscriminately our poor people the roadside people the children in human all this killing i was getting through one band transistor that was the only means of information to receive by bbc and the voice of america commander <laughs> sir which for which i was inspired to escape and join the liberation war commander sir just just uh, you you actually given us a fantastic cue because you're talking in a sense of leaders and leadership so i'll come back to you about the leadership aspect Uh, because i also want to bring in sandeep here about the leaders who made uh, difference to the war so i'll just come back to you with the second part of this question sandeep now some of the people who influenced uh, in a sense uh, were were key people uh, komar choudhury has talked of banga bandhu there in our case our prime minister of course but specific to the naval operation there were three key leaders one was admiral nanda the navy chief other uh, was king cobra uh, captain uh, mickey roy uh, the the uh, uh, dni who sort of conceived the whole thing and then you had the camp commandant in commander saman could you like to sort of describe how these three leaders 
uh, Sandeep, and then I will go back to Komodo Chaudhary Saab. Uh, Sandeep, you could tell us about how these three leaders uh, uh, made a difference to the operation. What was their uh, role in this? Well, um, uh, Srikant, the, uh, these three people were essentially the, uh, the inner circle of Operation X. I mean, it was a very, very closely guarded secret, even within the Indian government and the military. The Prime Minister knew of it. The Defence Minister possibly knew of it. The Navy chief certainly knew of it, and it was so secret that while the DNI, the uh, Director of Naval Intelligence, that's Captain Roy, knew of it, and he was, uh, in fact, very key to planning this whole operation, the Director of Naval Operations, that's Captain uh, Dawson, who later Dawson. became Navy chief, and Dawson. he didn't know about this operation. And this was like, it was like a, a, an organization within an organization within an organization. You know, it's like a small uh, group of officers and men within the uh, Directorate of Naval Intelligence that even the DNI didn't know about. It was kept that closely guarded, this whole secret. Now, if you look at the three leaders that you mentioned, uh, Admiral Nanda, they had all different motivations. Of course, he had this huge chip on his shoulder that he had to prove that the Navy was well, it, it was not going to sit out of this war. He was very clear about that, that 1965 would not get repeated in 1971. So he went into this war, planning it all the way, whether it was the missile boat operations or the INS Vikram. And this one was one of the largest, uh, I mean, this was the covert element of this entire naval campaign that he had planned. And for that, he chose uh, Captain M.K. Roy. Now, Captain M.K. Roy is this great naval aviator, uh, the King Cobra, as he was called, because he was a squadron commander of the 310 squadron. And he was this absolute, uh, uh, the planner of the entire operation. Now, he was the one who actually sat down and did all the, uh, uh, the, the planning for the personnel and the equipment, how many people you would need. He chose, uh, you know, the key officers, the diving branch, and he did all the running around. So he was the guy on the ground, the head of the naval intelligence thing. And he chose... Commander Samant, then Commander Samant, who was this very, very uh, highly trained submariner. He was one of our first uh, submarine uh, commanding officers trained in the Soviet Union. Again, a very interesting uh, life. I mean, he was trained by the Royal Navy first. He was commissioned in the UK. And then he was the first batch of uh, Indian naval officers to have been trained in the Soviet Union. So, in effect, he was trained by three navies. And he was there, uh, you know, uh, uh, looking for a great chance to prove himself, and this operation presented himself, presented him with that uh, chance. And he was uh, brought in as the man on the ground in Kolkata. So you had Admiral Nanda in Delhi, Captain Roy in Delhi as well. You know, uh, shuttling between Delhi and uh, 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 Kolkata, and you had Captain Samant on the ground there, not only reporting to the naval uh, headquarters, but also to some very, very unusual, uh, larger-than-life characters like uh, Major General J.F.R. Jacob, the Chief of Staff of the Eastern Command, and uh, General Arora. So this was, again, like a, an operation within an operation, all need-to-know basis. So it was these three uh, men who actually drove this entire operation. And, you know, they were actually, um, they had a lot to prove. Like, the, like I mentioned earlier, the Navy had sat out of all the wars, it had only seen limited action in the 61 war with uh, in, in Goa, the Goa liberation operation. And this was a chance to prove themselves. And, you know, so uh, Captain Salman told me that after Operation Jackpot in August, which Komro Chaudhary carried out, there was a sea change in the way the naval team was looked upon. Until then, they were looked upon as like, you know, interlopers. What's the Navy doing here so far inland? What are they doing? You know, I mean, don't they have anything? They should be out in, at sea sailing in ships. And after the success of this operation, it was kind of, it established the Navy's credentials. And uh, the best um, tribute to this operation actually came to me from one of my Army friends. An Army scholar who was one of the early uh, readers of the book actually called up to say that, uh, my God, uh, where has this operation been for so many years? You know, we keep getting taught about uh, guerrilla operation, uh, you know, cross-border commando raids where we, they, you know, go five kilometers and destroy two guns and come back. And that's supposed to be the greatest operation. And here you have the Indian Navy carrying out one of the world's largest coordinated operation with the Bangladeshi freedom fighters. You're hitting four ports simultaneously with hundreds of commandos and the world does not know about it. So that's the kind of, uh, you know, uh, 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 reverence with which this 
operation was being received by a lot of military scholars so it, it's an incredible story and I, you know it's it's the one thing about it it tells a lot about india that you know we might be a very loud and a garrulous nation but when it comes to keeping secrets sometimes we do it so incredibly well that you know even the person next door wouldn't know what uh, what's going on and who else but the indian navy the silent service to you know do this and uh, operation so glad you mentioned operation jackpot because that takes me back to commodore choudhury sir now uh, this happened on 15 16th august uh, you were the leader the biggest one on chittagong uh, the task force that went to chittagong you mentioned in the previous answer how difficult it was to take the limpet mines on your stomach uh, you also have a connection with chittagong i believe that your father was a doctor in chittagong so tell us a little about the the actual feeling of going and carrying out those attacks it was the biggest attack so jackpot is a turning point as both the high commissioner and sandeep mentioned it uh, you are the key key man in that so tell our listeners uh, uh, very briefly sir but tell us about operation jackpot and how you carried it out thank you once again but before that you wanted to know in the beginning i had no connection with before the defection no connection with the indian navy or any naval authority how it came it was mysterious but it came now the coming to operation on the 14th august midnight 71 the day pakistan was observing their independence day they will be busy and they will be enjoying and there was there cannot be any sorts of even smaller operations what to talk about the jackpot hardly people get prizes in the jackpot i got it in the whole world today i took 60 commandos with me sandy saab i mean the sandeep saab mentioned about the vietnamese also the few numbers and the other worlds they carried out the guerrilla warfare but with few few small group but not such a large 60 commandos trained by indian naval authority in a camouflage at palasi there is a river bhagirathi and the place is so secret so quiet and so well marked and so highly selected it was well secured security wise we were never allowed and in two in less than three months time we were trained but before that we eight submariners on arrival most likely 11th april because we started on 10th april from madrid the first man i must mention the beginner sri bedi the shah's de affairs in madrid for indian government he was the man who began and looked after us and there after the political asylum he got our political asylum from indira gandhi and the jagjeevan ram in 5 to 10 minutes time what a speed of action and then all the arrangement made by him to fly from madrid to bombay and then to delhi you have mentioned about the admiral roy i met him i mean we eight submariners we are in fact nine in the beginning but one left for london as he comes from select so they have a good connection but eight came finally and then we landed up in delhi to cut short 
There I met the man, the Gestapo chief, Captain Roy, and his son is with gray hair till neck portion today. He is the man who has invited me. I'm, I'm very happy. He's very kind. He said, if the COVID was not there, definitely I would have been in Pink City, Jaipur. I must congratulate the GLF <coughs> and for their invitation, my best wishes in this event. Now, the brain, the brainchild of this operation jackpot, well, born in Delhi under the leadership of Captain Roy. But we have not met, we have not known about him. But Admiral Nanda came twice by helicopter to visit us at Palasi. Regarding the, those days, Commander Samantha was a still commander, but after the liberation, I think he became captain and the naval advisor to the Bangladesh Navy. But I never met him much. At Palasi, he came once or twice in uniform short and the stocking those days that we used to put on, he visited, but he was given the coordination. But all these planning today, I appreciate like anything, what a plan that they blocked, India blocked air route. Now they wanted to block the sea route. And they decided, they asked having us in Delhi, what we want to do. We came up spontaneously. We have not come to stay in India and live in the five star or seven star or comfortable hotels. We want to go immediately, send us to the freedom struggle and let us join the freedom fighters. Freedom fighter comes once, never twice. We want to join and fight against the enemy. This has striking the Captain Roy and the team. The other people, those who were with him, not known till today. But then they decided to do this suicidal operation for blocking the Pakistanis' logistic support by sinking ships. And they were thinking and thought about us. And we were taken immediately and trained us and brought us to the level of instructor, commandos instructor, by giving training in Jamuna River secretly in Delhi, being in Delhi. Possibly it be began 20th April or maybe a little later, but we did it in 15 days' time. We finished our swimming with a pair of fins, but not any apparatus. And then we used to go to Kutub Minar for demolition. So we became expert in swimming and also demolition. So I can do the, not only the frogman commando attack, also I can do the guerrilla warfare. Sir, that's, so that's, now, that's wonderful, sir. I'm just, just briefly pause here. So I link this with another question to Sandeep and then we will go to some things that, that per perhaps both of you can answer together for me. Uh, Sandeep, uh, sir mentioned, and he mentioned about the very Spartan conditions and, and their inspiration not to live a five-star life, but go straight into freedom. Now, your second tier in the camp in Yamuna and Palashi actually consisted of such an ensemble cast of people, you know, below Saman, there were people like Samir Das, there were Aku Roy, there was Kapil, there was there were so many people. And later you had the Raizadas, the Mithars, you had uh, Chiman Singh the Great, you had uh, Petty Officer Dole. Now, my point is these people lived in very Spartan conditions, they established a camp, they trained. But how did you when, when you look at it and you do the story, 
it's it's like a huge spectacular screen where so many characters come together to play so very briefly because i've just been given a cue that uh, we we get audience questions in a couple of minutes in a couple of minutes you tell me and then i'll go to both of you as to how did this second tier of leadership and trainers play out and how did they perform their part so magnificently and then we will have some questions for both of you together so uh, shrikant ideally you would have had uh, wanted to have a marine commando wing to train uh, the naval guerrillas but the navy didn't have it so they improvised the next best thing they did was to reach out to the diving branch and you had a very small nascent diving branch then in the indian navy uh, Uh, they, they they considered themselves you know the the step children the cinderella uh, uh, service of the cinderella service if you can call it that and they were given this chance of training uh, the bangladeshi uh, freedom fighters and uh, they they had to you know get the logistics from the indian army and the, you know the tentage for instance well, that was something that they were completely uh, at sea about and uh, they had to set up these tents over there on the battlefield of plassey they led they led very spartan lives so uh, in fact one of the uh, crew there was telling me that it was like being out on a ship uh, on an endless patrol and you, you never know when you're coming back home you're completely cut off uh, your family doesn't know where you are because obviously it's a secret operation you have no mail there's no entertainment and there are intelligence people in the camp who are carefully watching everyone screening uh, uh, you know people there so it was a kind of a, a a very uh, cut off kind of existence and this is a uh, an operation that the navy had never undertaken but it just plunged into it headlong and in a matter of months they had as komro chaudhary mentioned they had trained over 400 uh, naval commandos and it's remarkable that this camp over there d- despite all those uh, you know spartan uh, uh, the camp that they had they had converted it into something like an assembly line to you know churn out naval commandos and it's it's uh, interesting because you had a sugarcane mill over there which was defunct and the sugarcane field that is the plassey was actually this uh, the the plantation that it had been the sugarcane had been uh, harvested and it the, the you had the naval commandos there now that was the new crop that uh, that was being you know grown there if you can call it that in 1971 so it's a remarkable operation and done in complete secrecy and when the operation ended they just packed up their uh, tents and camps and the personnel just melted back into the service uh, nobody even knew what had happened there that was to my mind the, the greatest thing of this operation keeping it secret for almost half a century i i i like the way you described that a, a harvest you sort of created a harvest of naval commandos and then disappeared without a trace i think we are ready for audience questions now uh, but Uh, I think there are not too many, so we could continue. Oh, okay. Yes, Noor, we've I've asked my colleagues to hold the questions. You continue because this is a fascinating uh, conversation. So please continue. Lovely. Thanks. Thanks so much, Sanjay. I I too am thankful to you. I think it's a fascinating conversation. So so, uh, uh, Commander Chaudhary, sir, to go back to you, you are, you are describing your sort of chemistry. You began with the Yamuna. You learnt how to. swim be a diver as well as be a saboteur now uh, let's shift the action back to palashi and back to your attack on the 15th of august uh, operation jackpot which is kind of central that was the biggest destruction so could you focus a little bit on jackpot and tell us more on that most certainly sir so i'm back again the people who trained us in jumuna and the kutub minar areas i still do not know them i don't remember a single i only remember captain who became admiral roy who came and met in delhi it is his plan here initially they wanted to do the operation that you see today the operation jackpot initially they thought they will do this blowing up ships with these eight submariners only because the the requirement was such they knew what is happening in the war field how to block the 1200 miles away the enemy coming and grabbing this land and killing the people how to stop them they were thinking 
the requirement 26 march the liberation started and they wanted to finish it in april but then they realize if these eight submariners are killed they will not get the second navy one like this those were already trained over 10 years experience of submarine service and various services as such they decided as the Sandeep Sa was mentioning about 400, the, initially they wanted to train 500 commanders, but they could not. Up to our selection and immediate, you know, uh, departure for the operation, they had to finish it in less than three months time. They could do only 300, but the rest came another 200 and then finally the plan was for thousand anyway in the meantime then they decided to recruit the bangladeshis and make these eight submariners as their leader as their instructor now after finishing our training in Delhi on 21st May 1971, Naval Commando Camp was opened at Palasi. There comes, there I have not, I have not seen uh, Admiral Roy coming, but Captain Samanto was there. But initially, the late Lieutenant Commander Martis and then the our commander Kapil was also there. He was lieutenant in those days. And lieutenant Das and the, the other diverse specialist Nana Bhuj, then the Chaman Singh, and then the many others. They were really great, helpful in a structure. They were so devoted. They trained from 21st May to June, July, and 1st August, I was picked up as a leader for the Chittagong operation with 60 commandos for Agurthala. And I was taken by most probably Air Force plane when I boarded the last man suddenly a tall with turban coming and just tapping my back on the aisle. And it was General Aurora. How are you? I never thought, I never met him. I never knew him. So in this operation, the Eastern Command was also in picture, but we had no knowledge because this was something so secret. And secretly, that is why the secret brought success. Such a su success. There are many things to dig out from this particular operations that the Indian naval people, how they came in our, you know, uh, assistance for training. Wonderful. General Aurora, General Aurora just taped and asked me, whispered, do you know your D-Day? See, this is 1st August, I remember. Few things I still remember, my computer is very strong. So he, I said, no, sir, I don't know. Because those days, these gadgets of, you know, in a second, you brought me, Zoom me, you are connecting me with the mobiles. It wasn't there. How, how we will communicate? When I will do the operation? The name was not known even. Operation Jackpot. Because when I'm going for the operation, I'm likely not to, I'm, I'm not coming there. Like it may happen, I may not come back. Not a single, because the operation was such. You are carrying live mine, and you have to go 72 miles away from Agartala to reach it again and do the ship sinking and come back. It was just not possible. Humanly, but, but we made it. 
so wonderful wonderful on that point i mean like you said you made it and uh, it is that story that sandeep describes uh, i've just been told by the organizers we got last couple of minutes so sandeep let me go back to you with what might be the last question uh, which is as chaudhry sir said and he's talked of some fascinating detail uh, like general arora sort of tapping his shoulders like the fact that there were actually nine people and not eight i mean even you know i read the book but i didn't i didn't uh, realize that to know that now your book actually is full of this very wonderful small nuggets you go in scale there's that lovely piece where you talk of commander samant maintaining accounts uh, so that after the operation he has to actually submit after the biggest covert operation he has to submit accounts of how he spent his money this is fascinating detail that you fill in some of the book you bring in about the soluble plug now just tell us a little about those little tiny ingredients that uh, 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 commander chaudhry talked about and you found those little ingredients that make for such an appetizing read and why people should sort of grab your book what were the little things that you found uh, that were so interesting maybe the force alpha for example or the riverine battle just tell us some of the things that have not been covered so far uh, before we end this conversation well uh, shrikant very it's a very unusual operation uh, lots of nuggets and a lot of improvisation like the one thing that you mentioned was the soluble plug and uh, that that is uh, that's a key plot uh, device in the book where uh, you uh, the the naval engineers you know de develop this soluble plug and uh, uh, they are uh, uh, they're pretty sure that it's going to work but then they realize that you know the time that it's going to be in the water it could actually endanger the life of uh, the naval commandos uh, uh, commodore chaudhry's commandos and so then they were racking their brains and they were kind of trying to find out what Uh, to do about it, and then suddenly, out of the blue, uh, someone comes up with a solution there in the camp, saying that you know, let's put a condom around this. And so, something as simple as that, uh, the the uh, the condom. Now they start. Uh, there's it. It so happens that there's this factory in Trivandrum that's set up uh, because of the family planning drive that picks up in the late '60s, and this uh, factory in Trivandrum starts supplying the condoms to this, uh, you know, the, the this camp and. part of the issue to the uh, naval commandos what they given is of course the uh, the limpet mines uh, submachine guns some rounds of ammunition the fuses that trigger off the mines and they given this large supply of condoms which they are supposed to wrap the uh, 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 the soluble plug in so it's little things like that you know improvisations like that the uh, be the soluble plug the, the condoms little things like using uh, uh, radio to communicate coded signals uh, you know it was literally everyone was thinking on their feet i i, I don't think they waited for the perfect moment or uh, you know the perfect time or the perfect equipment they were just going about improvising things like you know little things like um, in uh, they didn't have uh, a rubber uh, fins the, the rubber fins and the divers knives and it so happened that there was an officer who had just left the navy from the diving branch again would set up shop in Kolkata, and he started supplying these, uh, you know, the uh, knives and uh, fins. So it was all these little things that actually came up, and um, you know, made up this big operation. Uh, so it's just, it's a, it's a tribute to the Indian Navy's out of the box thinking. If you ask me, if they didn't wait for the perfect thing of, you know, having all these things falling into place or the equipment, it's just they put the right people. uh you know at the right jobs to just get the thing done they got the best and the brightest to come up with this um, you know the, this operation and everything fell through and all those details that you mentioned all those little things are what uh, they're like the uh, you know the the uh, spices in this whole spices. story and, and none of it i i didn't create any of it it was all there and in fact i had to double check some of them were you know too good to be true some of those little uh, nuggets so uh, that's what operation x essentially is all about it's all this thing coming through uh, coming together to make this incredible uh, story of human courage fortitude and this one of the greatest untold stories until now wonderful i mean you could have this small subsets called 
how a factory in Trivandrum played a big role in the 70s and war. So, but uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you'll agree it's been a fascinating discussion. I'm sure you would have wanted to do much more. I would have wanted to converse with both of them. Uh, Sandeep, fantastic historian, great raconteur, and Commodore Chaudhary, war hero, Bir Uttam, Bir Bikram, a great person. I'm sure this has, you know, sort of uh, brought in huge amount of desire for you to go and buy the book. Do so right now and read it. Uh, it's it's a fascinating read. But I, mu I must speak few words about our Bengali naval commandos who turn to a naval commandos from the student life, from different different life, coming and joining the freedom struggle the way we have chosen and selected and brought them in to become a naval commando. What a spirit, what a courage, what a dedication. I must say my heads off. And they were also, you know, you cannot imagine the way they, they love us. They, they still at this age, everyone is most probably seven and above. I mean, seven men, 70 and above. <laughs> yes, sir. Absolutely, sir. So, Absolutely. So you said it right. Hats off our salute to them. As our High Commissioner also said, this is a recognition that it is a liberation struggle by the Bangladesh people. Salute all those naval commandos. Thank you for a wonderful session, my co-panelists. Sanjay, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Commodore Kesnur. Thank you, Commodore Chaudhary. And thank you, Sandeep Unathan. As you said, what a great feat of great fortitude, what great battle, and there's so much more to be discussed and to be discovered, uh, not just on Operation X, but during the Liberation War of Bangladesh, which both countries participated in and fought side by side, shoulder to shoulder. Uh, thank you, Sandeep Unithan, for bringing the story to life, a story that was lost, I think, or hidden or not told for over 50 years. But yes, you have it, not, but, but you have not heard the communication of with the naval commandos, whether we are alive or we are we are we have reached the target or we have done the operation or we are coming back, you still do not know. The we, two we, songs played by the Cal yes. Calcutta, Kolkata radio Kolkata, station. All India radio station. Absolutely. Yes. But I think our readers need to discover that by reading Operation <laughs> X. Uh, by looking at the way Kambodo Chaudhary uh, was one of the heroes, uh, as we know, celebrated heroes, along with so many other people. Many of them have passed on, uh, including Admiral Mickey Roy, but so many are still alive. So do pick up the book. It is a celebration, as Sandeep Unithan said, of the greatest and the biggest covert operation, uh, which put many people, including the United States of America to shame at that point of time. I must mention one thing, sir, to you. After my operation, when I was returning, still in torn lungi, torn shirts, because I went like that. It was on with my 31 pair of shoe with the calendar, not at all. In France, it was barefooted. When I came to Nine Theater and met the General Usmani, he was a small man sitting in a handle chair, when he saw me, he literally jumped and touched the roof. He said, how could you do it and hug me? He was not releasing me. How could you do it? I said, this is called dedication. This is called willpower. This is called love and affection for the people, for the country under the leadership. Commodore Chaudhary, it's also called vision. You had the vision of defecting while you were in France. And that defection is an incredible story that all of us will read about. Thank you all for watching and being such a great audience. We hope you enjoyed this conversation and we'll log back on 7th of December at 7.30 p.m. For, for our next session from the JLF Brave New World Voices of Faith series. Stay well, stay masked. Good night. Remember, order up. Sandeep Nithan's Operation X, and wishing everybody on the occasion of the Indian Navy Day 2020 best wishes. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Thanks a lot.